Next on BYUSN, why I'm so confident BYU is not only winning, but winning handily at Liberty. The general and former star linebacker for BYU, Cameron Jensen, is going to join the show to talk about how different he expects the BYU defense to look against the Liberty Flames on Saturday. You know what, Jerem? I'd take Cam Jensen as my team motivator right now if I could. Oh, the general and general gridlock, sir. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Friday, October 21st. What is good? I am Jerem Jordan Provo. He is Spencer Linton in Lynchburg, Virginia. What's going on today? How's the weather? The weather is perfect. It is a little chilly this morning. It's going to be ideal conditions for BYU tomorrow, which is different than the last time they visited Virginia. We'll get into more of that later. But look at this place. 25,000 seats, Williams Stadium, beautiful setup in Lynchburg, brand new sport turf field. Jaron, this school has pumped a ton of money into their athletic facilities. There's a lot of online uh, engagement with the school, a lot of online students, which I'm told has given them a ton of revenue to just put into the facilities here. And a lot of it has gone into the football stadium. So many upgrades. I'm standing on a berm right now, which is a relatively new addition. So really nice stadium for you Liberty. look nice, And uh, as we've heard, <laughs> I appreciate that. A sellout expected tomorrow. It's going to be, I mean, in a, for lack of a better word, hype tomorrow for this game between the Flames and the Cougars. It looks great. It really does. And uh, they got a nice setup there, and they're an emerging program, obviously, uh, here in just year five of FBS. Year five. I, I mean, unbelievable. And they've won a ton of games, and a lot of that has to do with Hugh Freeze. He's, he's done a remarkable job for this program here. Uh, on today's show, we'll talk about Hugh Freeze for sure. And why he cares so much about halftime scores while he's the coach against the Liberty Flames. We'll also make our game day guarantees. Jerem, are you going to guarantee a win? Don't answer that just yet. We'll also reveal some other game notes that you need to know to fully prepare for the Cougars and Flames. Plus, another Fantasy Friday brings Jerem another opportunity <laughs> to end to lose. the losing trend. <laughs> and we, we've got a copycat uniform watch to discuss as well. But first, today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. It is football game day eve as BYU prepares for 6-1 Liberty tomorrow in Lynchburg, Virginia. As mentioned, Cougars are a 6.5 point favorite out of Vegas still, 7 some places. 54% chance to win according to ESPN's FBI. Pre-game begins at 1.30 Eastern time on BYU TV and BYU Radio. It was the Taysom Hill show for the New Orleans Saints yeah. last night. At least Amazon Prime's production made it feel that way. Even though the Saints lost, Taysom did another, uh, well, did some more amazing things for his team in a 42-34 loss to the Arizona Cardinals. Had three carries for nine yards, completed both of his passes for 48 yards, and caught a TD pass. Again, all in the same game. He does everything for that team. Meanwhile, the starter for New Orleans, Andy Dalton, threw three picks. Two of those were returned for touchdowns. So just maybe... We see some more Taysom Hill if the Saints want to win any more games this season, Jerem. Uh, it feels like it. Why, why not play him a little more? The success when he's in there is high. Cougars in the NFL, other ones. Wilson versus Wilson in the Jets versus Bronco matchup. Tyler Algier and the Falcons play your Bengals. Jamal Williams and the Lions take on the Cowboys. Dax Milne and the Commanders play the Packers, who are reeling. Brady Christensen and the Christian McCaffrey-less Panthers take on the unhappy Tom Brady's of Tampa Bay. KVN Michael Davis and the Chargers play the Seahawks. And Fred Warner and the Niners play Andy Reid, now with Christian McCaffrey, although he's probably not, not going to play. And the Chiefs. BYU women's volleyball continues a lengthy road trip, their fourth straight road game overall, this time against number four ranked San Diego. Let's go! In the Slim Jim, Jenny Craig Pavilion. This follows. The first WCC loss of the season for BYU, and they lost to Pacific, so the Cougars drop down to number 17 in the latest poll. They can rise right back up with the win over the Toreros. Massive match tonight. This is good. The good news for BYU is they're ranked sixth nationally in hitting percentage at 304. Hopefully that type of offense shows up tonight, Jerem. Huge match against a very, very good team in San Diego. Lauren Gustin is one of 20 players on the Katrina McLean watch list given to the nation's top power forward. Gustin was a finalist last year after averaging 10.7 points and 11 and a half rebounds a game. BYU women's soccer continuing their recent surge up the West Coast Conference standings and hope to continue that 
direction when they host Gonzaga tomorrow night, Southfield, BYU and the Zags both three wins, no losses and two ties in conference play. The Zags, however, are 5-0 and on the road this year. Tricky matchup between the Cougars and Gonzaga. You can watch it live on the BYU TV app at 9 p.m. Eastern. Cougars are 14-0 and all time against the Zags. Chris Watkins trying to uh, unseat BYU there. And Paul Asike is coming off the bench for USA Rugby as the Falcons, in this case, not the Eagles, because it's an, not an international match or a test match, as they call it, playing, on, uh, playing Air Link Pumas from South Africa. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Indeed it is, Jerem, and you know what? Let's just get right to it. You, you have been very, very bullish about BYU playing well against Liberty and that Cougar fans have kind of been freaking out unnecessarily this week <laughs> because you feel like BYU is going to come out and they're going to bring it. Why are you so confident that BYU is going to show up at Williams Stadium tomorrow and play some of their best football of the season and win this game? Well, first off, if fans want to freak out, that's their prerogative. I'll never tell you not to freak out. But <laughs> I feel very confident in BYU because I, I think there's a certain level of urgency with this team that uh, hasn't been there last couple weeks. Obviously, having lost two in a row to uh, Notre Dame and Arkansas, there's going to be changes. We expect Kalani Sitake to call the plays defensively. We've talked a lot about simplification this week. To, we'll talk to Cam Jensen as well about what he thinks. But I've got four things that really stick out, Spence. First off, Liberty's 6-1, and one, but the Arkansas close game is certainly a moral victory. Uh, uh, excuse me, Wake Forest. One point loss there. They go for two. They lose that one. Wow, Wake Forest is number 13 right now. That looks like a good loss. Four of the seven games decided by a touchdown or less, three by one or two points, including Southern Miss in quadruple overtime. And last week in uh, an FCS game against an old rival, Gardner-Webb, one-point game. This team beat an FCS team by one point, okay? Shouldn't they be in the top 25 yep. if they're that good, Spence, six and one? Well, the schedule hasn't been great. They got two votes. Vegas says BYU by, by about a touchdown. They're 77th in the super ranking. BYU 55th, by the way. They're good. I'm not saying Liberty's not good. I just think BYU's better. Number two, third-string quarterback. They played three different guys, which uh, says a lot about their depth. Jonathan Bennett, a 3-0 as a starter. Oh, no. Ah. One-point game with Gardner-Webb. Come on, BYU's not Gardner-Webb. If Charlie Brewer <laughs> plays, he hasn't thrown a pass in 49 days. Also, this is the guy that helped BYU in the streak against Utah. Do we want Charlie Brewer to play, right? And Caden Salter was the starter versus Wake Forest. I don't know if he's going to be back, right? Sounds like not. Threw for 246 against Wake, ran for 100, lost 29, but gained 100 in that game. I'm most uh, afraid of him, but it doesn't sound like he'd be the guy. Number three, Liberty's turnover dependent, Spence. If they don't get takeaways, I don't think they're going to be in this game. Uh, BYU takes care of the ball like it has. Only five turnovers all Fair year. Cougars going to win this game. Also, they give it away a ton, as I've said all week. 16 giveaways, fifth worst in the country. Plus 28 points off turnovers. If they don't get turnovers, they're not going to generate that extra possession or two that they probably need to beat BYU. And number four, I've only talked about Liberty. I'll talk about BYU right now. BYU's losses are to quality opponents. They are. Oregon is fantastic. Notre Dame doesn't look as fantastic. That was a disappointing one. Arkansas is 4-3, and three, but they played a tough schedule. This is a different kind of game. I believe BYU will show up. And if they don't, it's certainly World War III on Monday. But I am confident that BYU is not just going to win, Spence. They will win handily. I believe they'll show up. Wow. Okay. Well, I hate that I have to take this conversation to the well of Eastern <laughs> time zone. Boo. Kickoffs. Boo. We got to go, go there again. We got to go there again because, frankly, it just has not been good for BYU. If you think about the last seven road trips for BYU, and not just Eastern time zone, but any time the Cougars have gone east, it typically has not boded well for the Cougars outside of the season opener against USF this year. That was that kind of felt like this breakout party, and finally BYU's figured it out in Florida in the Eastern Time Zone. They did their thing, but when you look at everything aside from that game and BYU travels east, it just hasn't been good. Going back to 2021, BYU travels east to Baylor. They lose that game. BYU travels east to Shreveport, Louisiana for the bowl game. They lose that game. 2019, BYU goes east to Toledo and USF. They lose those games. Did beat Tennessee, but the trend is BYU's 2-5 and five in their last seven road trips 
when they travel east. Then you throw in the afternoon factor. In the last nine afternoon games spanning two seasons, BYU's three and six. Three and six. It's an afternoon game tomorrow. It's in the eastern time zone. And it's just the third time BYU's ever been to the state of Virginia for a game. So what type of team shows up? Now, normally, Jerem, I'm just going to say, look, as confident as you are, I'm hesitant because of the travel and the direction and the trends. But you know what? I'm kind of with you. I feel like BYU is going to play really, really sound, simplified on defense football tomorrow. They will be motivated and feeling the urgency after everything I've heard about team meetings and Kalani Satake getting involved in play calling and the guys rallying around Elisa Tuiaki and people being held accountable. I'm buying into the fact that BYU, or the idea rather, that BYU is going to play a better brand of football tomorrow. They will be significantly more sound in their assignments on defense, at least they should be. They've had the best week of practice all season, I'm told. I'm, I'm kind of buying what you're putting out there about, yeah, Liberty being a little bit of a paper tiger and BYU feeling the urgency in spite of the afternoon kickoffs and the Eastern time zone. I like the idea that BYU is going to play well tomorrow. I think it comes down to if BYU's offense can start quickly, then, yeah, maybe BYU does win handily. I think a, like a, a decisive win kind of lies with BYU's offense starting quickly. I think the defense is absolutely going to be there tomorrow. They are motivated. They are angry. They're Dave McCann's favorite word, agitated. Yes, Jeremy, I, I, I am to a degree with you, and I expect BYU to, to show up and play like they have to win this game tomorrow. I thought Dave's favorite word was flyover, but that's just me. Yeah, BYU beat Southern, uh, Georgia Southern. <laughs> they beat Navy, right? Um, those are some good stats. I just think that's uh, correlation, not causation uh, in this case. I could see the argument for both. But uh, another stat to put out there. BYU undefeated this year 4-0 when allowing less than 400 yards, 0-3 when allowing more than 400 yards. In fact, it's a 213-yard difference when BYU wins and when BYU loses. So if, if Liberty's racking up yards, BYU's in trouble. But I just, I just believe the BYU offense is going to do enough and the defense is going to show up and be better, which brings us to topic two, some game notes. Start us off. Three each. Go. All right, Jerem, I'm going to start my game notes with this. BYU and Liberty are two of the nation's worst teams in field goal percentage. I hope this changes tomorrow. BYU ranks 117th out of 131 FBS teams, making just six of 11 field goals this season. The good news for the Cougars is Liberty's even worse. They rank 127th in that category, having made just five of 11 of their own right. So the two teams combined are 11 for 22 in field goal attempts. Not great, Jerem. Not great at all. College kickers. My first game note. We've said it throughout the week, but Liberty's got a good defense. Number one in the country in takeaways with 18. Number two in sacks and TFLs. The BYU offense has a challenge this week that I think they're ready for, and BYU won't turn the ball over much, if at all. Okay. Number uh, two for me, BYU, I mentioned this earlier, making a rare stop in the state of Virginia. Just the third time that BYU has ever played a game in this state. The first two games happened against the University of Virginia, an overtime thriller back in 2000 when BYU trailed 21 to nothing and came back and won that game in extra time. And then in 2013, that deluge, that storm delayed awful mess that BYU lost with Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams against the Cavaliers. So. Yeah, rare stop in the Cavalier State. In 2000, it was an afternoon game, East Coast, and BYU won. Let's go. Okay, my second note. Flames in are two, seven. In 2013, it was an afternoon game, and they lost. But it, I mean, and it was dry. Uh, Flames are seven and one when the opponent travels more than a thousand miles. You're traveling 1750. I don't care. That's about to be seven and two. Hey, BYU has been the team that's been ranked consistently over the past two seasons, right? Well, now it's Liberty that's receiving votes in the latest AP poll with two, as you pointed out, Jerem. BYU is receiving no votes in the AP oh, poll for no! the first time in almost two years. Weird territory for the Cougars, given the trend of what's been happening under Kalani Sataki. But, yeah, Li Liberty is the team that's receiving votes. BYU receiving no votes currently. Yeah, just be in the top 44. That's the goal, right?
And last but not least, Liberty is 5-0 when losing time of possession. What? They get a lot of takeaways. In fact, they've only won time of possession one time this year. So, huh? It's kind of a weird stat. That uh, wraps up game one. Okay, let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. Our question today is this. How confident are you going into the BYU at Liberty game? Let's go. BYU in the NFL on Instagram. I think our guys are going to come out with a fire lit under them. I think we will see intensity we haven't seen since Baylor. I'm confident. I believe in that too, Spence. There will be a change based on the level of urgency required here. And oh, by the way, BYU's not playing a P5 this week. They're playing a Liberty, Liberty team that is vulnerable. Ask Gardner Webb. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I'm, I'm glad you corrected me on the Eastern Time Zone stat. I'm, I'm, feeling a li- or I'm feeling a little bit better about BYU's chances. You know, just if you go East, win games, because you're right. They did beat Georgia Southern. They did beat Navy. There's they a beat few win there. In it's like yeah. the, cap- yeah. the, the capability is there. Overall, it's not great. But I get thank it. you. I, you've made me feel a little bit better about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jerem, let's keep it rolling. Uh, tune in tomorrow for everything you could possibly want to know about BYU and Liberty with BYU Sports Nation game day. Of course, I'll be live in Lynchburg at Williams Stadium. Interviews, features, breakdowns, watch it live. BYU TV and the BYU TV app at 3.30 Eastern time for the game. 1.30 Eastern is when we'll begin our coverage. And what's fixable this weekend for the Cougar defense? Cameron Jensen, the general, has the answers. This is BYU Sports Nation from Lynchburg and Provo. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. And hopefully the defense does. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Jerem Jordan, Provo, Spencer Linton at Williams Stadium in Lynchburg, Virginia. We now welcome into the program the general. Cameron Jensen is on the show. Cameron, welcome back to the show, man. Hey, good to be back on. Happy Friday before game day. Hey, game day eve is always exciting. And this week there's some anxiety. There's some uh, nervous uh, feelings going into this matchup with Liberty, certainly after giving up 52 and a loss at home to Arkansas. Yet I just argued in the previous segment that I believe BYU is going to win handily. Uh, how are you feeling about this matchup? Look, I think we're going to respond well. That, I mean, uh, we have to. Uh, they're a good team. They're good offensively. They're great defensively. But we're BYU, and I want to see this team respond, what the leadership's like after a loss that we had at home. I want to see 
you know, how we respond and what leadership really takes control, that player-led leadership. And so I think we respond well and we go in and, and beat Liberty. Cam, we're expecting BYU to make some significant changes in terms of who play or is making the play calls on the defensive side, and there will be some personnel shifting for sure on the staff. And, you know, they'll probably limit the number of players instead of these massive line changes. That said, how difficult are midseason changes when you're talking about kind of overhauling the defense? Yeah, it's it's hard, but this is a defense that changes week to week. And uh, there's some benefits to that. And I think there's some negative effects as well. You know, as a linebacker, I was in the same defense and I knew how to fit defensively in the run game specifically. And I think that's kind of hard knowing your fits when the defense changing week to week. So I think this is a defense that's used to changing and I think that kind of the side effect is um, stopping the run because the fits are different each week as a linebacker and so I think they're going to simplify it I think if there's one way to go and where I think they should go is just really simplify it and like you said we're the substitutions you know the stats been 58 percent our, our starters are playing 58 percent of the time and I think that's really unique and and, and I saw players get in the game against Arkansas that weren't ready and didn't make plays. And so I, I like the fact we're not going to substitute, make our starters play more. It's game eight. They've got the endurance. And like you said, I think Kalani getting involved in the defense, that does a lot. It's not just schematically. It's culture as well. It's a sense of urgency. It's, well, we got the head coach helping. we got to get going. And there's something that that does, again, just not schematically, but just culture-wise, when the head coach says, hey, I'm getting more involved in the defense, let's go. And so I think that'll help as well. I think they'll simplify it and have our better players on the field more. Dad came down to the basement and said, hey, it's time to clean up, and he's helping clean up. Uh, so the sense of urgency is much higher. BYU 96th, yeah. by the way, in 4.47 yards per carry allowed. So stopping the run, uh, certainly interesting. And that number is interesting too, 58%. So besides line changes and stopping the run, what else do you feel like needs to be adjusted in some way this week? Yeah, I'd say simplify what I said earlier. You know, it was interesting. I was listening to Aaron Rodgers talk about their lack of offense production. He said, when we try and do too much, that's when we struggle. We need to simplify. And I would say that this is a defense. Let's feel, let's figure out what we do well. Maybe not change as much week to week. Let's really simplify it. Let's get people comfortable in the run game where they fit where people are playing so I would say really simplify because you can't change too much midseason. you can't change a whole defensive scheme that's that's difficult and so I would say let's fight let's figure out what we do well and let's just really simplify it so players know where they're fit it's not confusing and so I would look at them to do that figure out what we've done well get our best players on the field and just really simplify the defense Cam, for whatever reason, BYU has not played well in afternoon starts over the past two years. In fact, I just chronicled last segment that BYU is 3-6 and six in their last nine combined afternoon games over the course of two seasons. It's an afternoon game against Liberty. they got to travel two time zones to the East Coast, to Virginia, a place that BYU doesn't visit often. How much stock do you put into the difficulty increasing of an afternoon game in the Eastern time zone? I don't know. I think it is difficult traveling. I know they left two days early, you know, so I think that'll help. But look, I, I mean, I played afternoon games, late games. You just got to be ready to play. And no matter when it is, yeah, it is a little difficult. But I, I mean, I never thought it was hard an afternoon game or evening time. So I don't know what's causing that, but I would look at what they're doing. Get the team up moving early. You know, uh, I like that they're going there two days early. Get a little more climatized to it. So, you know, I think no matter when you play, you got to be ready. But uh, I think that I, I have heard uh, you know, we interviewed Max Tooley. He said they're doing some things in the morning, getting a more active, some stuff like that. So I know the team's doing something to combat those lackadaisical starts and afternoon games. But you just got to be ready to play. No matter when it is what, you got to make sure you're a player, you're ready to go. The pride of Rick's College uh, and then BYU, Cameron Jensen. We're, we're is a dying on. breed. There's hey, not many of us left. The spirit of Rick's <laughs> is alive, right, uh, in Rexburg there. Um, yep. Cam, Seven takeaways from the defense this year. That's a low number. Uh, it's one a game. That's, uh, you know, 99th in FBS. That's not great. To what degree can you create turnovers? Obviously, you can punch it out, but picks almost feel like sometimes you need a little bit of luck there. So how does this team create more uh, takeaways? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of it is um, – disguising defensively, not letting the quarterback know what you're doing. Uh, I think that's one thing quarterbacks are way too comfortable when they play our defense. Uh, you know, I'm kind of sick of hearing how uh, quarterbacks have their 
season best game against us or <laughs> career best. You know, I think we need to make them more uncomfortable. They kind of know what we're doing. And so I think disguising or switching that up, but turnovers, it just comes to a, you know, Max Tooley, that strip, that's just an instinctive play. It's hard to teach those things. It's, it's Nakua, you know, how he was, he was always around the ball. It's, it's, you gotta have those ex- instinctive players that just know how to get to the ball. And we haven't really had someone, Max Tooley is the one that's created a lot of those turnovers. You wanna see more people with those kind of instincts and those, you know, deliberate to go strip the ball. And, and we don't have too many of those this year. And so I noticed that it was our second, uh, force fumble that we recover that's you know we need to be more active and I think that starts with scheme disguising and then players just more deliberately going for that ball but uh, yeah Max Tooley's really the only one out there that's that's making uh, turnovers happen Cam you were such a natural leader at BYU and your teammates say it's just a part of who he was we we all look to him as one of our clear leaders Jaron Hall is the clear leader of BYU's offense Who's the leader that needs to step up for this BYU defense? Because there's not really a clear-cut one that we have noticed at this point of the season. I think that's that's the problem is, you know, I'm going to go back to my sophomore year where we had a game like this. We, we beat Notre Dame at home. It was my first game playing college. Uh, and then we went to Stanford, and we got beat up. I mean, I got beat up. It was, uh, ooh, it was a wake-up call to Division One football. They were a big physical team. And I had Brady Papinga. Uh, the next day, say, Cameron, look me in the eye and say, you need to do better. You're better than that. You need to play better. And believe me, when it's a player coming at you rather than Coach Mendenhall or my Coach Lamb at the time, that, that's different. That's different. And so, I believe me, I, was, I played better. I played harder because I didn't want to let Brady Papinga down. And uh, I want to know who that is. Who's that, Brady, who's that guy that I learned from um, that's going to hold them accountable. And every team, every great team has that leadership where there's somebody like that. And so you look at Peyton Wilgar, I know he's out this week. He's kind of, the, I mean, he's got the C on his jersey. You look for him, he was voted captain. Apili as well. So I look at them to really, it's different when a player holds you accountable than a coach. And I want to see those players say that is unacceptable against Arkansas. 644 yards, 52 points. Man, I'm embarrassed. I, this is not happening again, but it needs to come from the players. Coaches can only do so much. They can only, it's when you have that guy on your team, that Brady Papinga um, that can hold people accountable. That's when, that's when things get better. And so I hope there's been somebody this week, Peyton Wilgar or others, but like you said, there hasn't been really a clear cut one on defense, but I hope somebody really fills that void and steps up. At least publicly, Gabe Judy Lally, one of the cornerbacks, said, hey, it's up to us. It's not up to the coaches. Yeah. We need to do this, like you said. And I've been waiting to hear about that players-only meeting when, when uh, you know, crap hits the fan. The players-only meeting rallies the guys. I haven't heard about that one this week. Perhaps they had it and it's not out. But uh, BYU is facing a Liberty team that's very interesting. Six and one, just barely beat an FCS team yet. They just lost by one after going for two against Wake Forest, uh, you know, several weeks ago. They're interesting. They're good, but how good is the question, and what will BYU's response be? There's a lot that BYU can fix of its own volition, Cam, but they're playing a Liberty team on, on the East Coast. What do you think of this mm-hmm. matchup against this team this week? Look, I, I, there's one thing I know, and, and just look, listening to what Hugh Freeze, their coach, has been saying, this is a big game for them. They're, they're, like, they are going to come out ready to play. This is, we're there, we're at their home stadium. This is a game where they want to take that program to the next level. They are six and one and lost to that Wake Forest team that's 13 that lost to Clemson by six. So, but then they've also had games where they've really struggled against lesser opponents. So it's a team that's kind of, you know, two teams at the same time. What, what team we're going to face? I think we're going to get that team that almost beat Wake Forest. And so our team needs to come. Obviously they're going to see, we haven't stopped the run. Um, they're going to try and exploit that. Let's see. Let's make sure we stop the run. We're not going to win any more games if we give up 244 yards rushing like we did against Notre Dame and uh, uh, Arkansas. So I want to see our defense respond because, look, Liberty's going to come ready to play. And if this is one of those things where we're going to let Arkansas beat us twice, we can't. And that's where I hope this leadership really stepped up because they're going into a hornet's nest with Liberty because I, I just I feel it. You can see they're coming ready to play. This is a big game for them. Yeah, Cam, when you point out Liberty is more than capable, they're a team that averages almost 200 yards rushing per game. So certainly there will be an emphasis on the Flames running the ball against BYU. Now, we've also touched on the idea that 
We feel strongly that Kalani Satake is going to have a significant imprint on this game. He, he's heavily involved in the defensive play calling. How much of a difference do you expect that to make, and where will we see that manifest itself? I think it'll make a big difference. It's happened in the program. I mean, I remember when Mendenhall took over, I think it was twice, one with Nick Howell and one with Jaime Hill. There was a big increase in production. There is something when... And again, like I said, it's just not schematics. And I think they're going to simplify it. I think Kalani is emphasizing the run. He's going to make it simple for run fits. Um, but it's more just the culture. When you have a head coach get involved, and there's something that just the head coach uh, coaching on defense. And I think we'll see a big increase like we've done in the past uh, that we've seen when uh, a, def a head coach took over some of those defensive call responsibilities. There's just something culturally that happens, a sense of urgency and a whole level just of excitement in a way. And so I think we'll see, like we have in the past when this has happened, an increase in production. Cam Bronco, Bronco Mendenhall is a free agent uh, head coach. Uh, there's some high-profile jobs out there. Is there one where you think he'd be the best fit? Well, they're going to have to get him off the beach. I was texting him a little <laughs> bit. Every time I text him, he's, uh, he's on the beach somewhere, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't, he's like, like surfing, you know, so I don't, they'll have to get him off a beach, but uh, um, I, I think he's going to get back and there are some high profile jobs. Again, I can't, you know, you know where my stance is. I, I love playing for him. He's a guy that got the most out of me. You know, I, he's the type of coach I wanted. He's not for everybody, but for me, he was, he was my coach. So I, I'd love to see him in another program. He's just such a good coach, what he does to players. He's learned so much, even from his BYU days, seeing what he did at Virginia. So I don't think we've seen the end of, of Coach Mendenhall. I, I think he's sooner than later we're going to get we're going to hear that uh, news break. But uh, I'd love to see him at one of those schools that you talked about. Wisconsin, Nebraska, Arizona State. There's a bunch Nebraska, of high-profile yeah. ones. We'll see. Cam, we appreciate I think the Nebraska time. Nebraska would be a great fit for him. Yes, I'd like to see that, but we'll see. And the irony of going back to the 2015 spot uh, would be fun as well. Yeah. Cam, we appreciate <laughs> the time, man. Best of luck with everything. Thanks, guys. Go Cougars. Cameron Jensen, go Cougs indeed, the general. Hey, if only the general could be out there this Saturday, Spence. Indeed. Uh, and you know who will be out there this Saturday, at least in the broadcast booth? Greg Rebell, Riley Nelson, and Mitch Jurgens on the sideline as they get you set on the BYU radio side for BYU at Liberty tomorrow. 1.30 Mountain Time, 3.30 Eastern. Check it out on the BYU radio and the BYU radio app. And coming up, is Liberty trying to summon Ute energy this weekend? We'll tell you what we mean by that as we continue BYU Sports Nation from Lynchburg, Virginia and Provo. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. Life is full of competition. It helps measure progress, pushes us to improve, and whoops, it can be a whole lot of fun. BYU TV has its own kind of competition shows where sportsmanship rules, teamwork wins, and good character triumphs. I wasn't just gonna leave you there. Whether it's about families competing or life lessons being taught, 
you'll want your family to see it together. Download the free BYU TV app today. This is BYU Sports Nation live from Lynchburg, Virginia and Provo, Utah to interact with the show and get great content throughout the day. Simple, follow us on all of the major social media platforms including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Spencer, I am Jerem. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Round is presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Let's start here, Jerem. Taysom Hill and Zach Wilson are the only players in the entire National Football League with a pass, rush, and receiving touchdown this season. My question for you is, will Jaron Hall join that list from the college ranks this year? Yes, he will. He's rushed 45 times and uh, does not have a touchdown carrying the rock. He will this year. He will. Yeah, amazing that he's caught a pass for a touchdown. Certainly, he's thrown a bunch of touchdown passes, but... I didn't think we'd be at this point of the season and Jaron Hall is without a rushing touchdown. I feel like, yeah, he's going to accomplish that in the back five regular season games for sure. No doubt. Former Fox Sports president Bob Thompson tweeted the following yesterday. Not sure that anything is, quote, imminent for the Big 12 related to the TV contract. Too early in the process, but Pac-12 needs to get a deal done now to provide some stability to the conference. And they need to get it done before Big 12. Otherwise, there may be some wandering eyes emoji from a couple of corner schools. What jumps out more, that he doesn't think anything is imminent for the Big 12 or that he thinks it's a race between the Pac and Big 12? I think that it's about the race between the Big 12 and Pac-12. A guy with that type of resume and some prestige, if you will, saying that about the race just solidifies in my mind that there actually is an arms race in that regard. Sure. I'm paying more attention to that. How about you? Yeah, it's an expansion thing. I agree. Um, of Is the Pac-12 going to survive? And that survival is contingent on nobody leaving, obviously, and they want to secure that. I put it in quotes because who, know, who knows how long that's going to be. Just a couple of years, I would imagine. That TV contract, to me, is probably no longer than five to seven years for the Pac-12. Hey, Jerem, no, B yeah, yeah, yeah. no BYU Cougar on the Pro Football Focus Top 50 NFL Draft Big Board is there. We, we thought maybe there would be a couple there with Jaron Hall, and Blake Freeland, Clark Barrington kind of fun. No, nobody in the top 50. Is this cause for concern at this point to you? I was hoping there'd be at least one, one of the two you mentioned. But this doesn't co does not correlate to draft status because those are team needs and positional. So I think if you went to 100, we might see Blake and or Jaron on that list. Yeah, for sure. Uh, no cause for concern for me. It's at the halfway point of the season. And frankly, when you have teams like the Las Vegas Raiders involved, uh, it, you could be in the top 200 and have a guy go in the top Throw. 50. So it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter right now. Jaron Hall might go to your Seahawks in the first round. It's just it it's all about fit and what they do in their spring, their pro day in the spring. Like, that matters a lot. Shout out to Darius Hayward Bay. Bigger storyline, Chris Watkins' return with Gonzaga against BYU Women's Soccer tomorrow night. Top two offenses in the conference or the battle of second-place teams in the league as well? Uh, I think it's more about the battle of second-place teams in the league. This has become about BYU's re recent dominance in the West Coast Conference and their desire to once again win in their final tour of the West Coast Conference. So for me, it's about the battle of second-place teams because the winner of this game They've got a really, really good shot to win the conference this year. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Both tied for second with 11 points. Santa Clara 5-0, 15 points. They'll stay in first no matter what happens Saturday. But only four games left in the regular season. The time is now. The time is almost now for BYU men's basketball. I can't believe that we are this close to basketball season. And Rudy Williams revealed the latest uniform drop for the BYU men's team with the Royal uniforms coming out. A little bit of black trim in there as well. Watch this video. What up, Coop Nation? It's your boy, Three, checking in. Hey, I'm up to no good, bro. Honestly, I'm just going to leak these. I'm going to leak these jerseys. I don't care. You guys, I'm not going to make you guys wait. Come on, that's no fun. Check out these new jerseys, man. See them. Let's see what we got, man. We got our boy G right here. Look who it is, man. Yeah, 
I don't care, man. We're leaking them. We're dropping them right now. Let's go. <laughs> Rudy Williams gets social media. He's got he a future it. in front of the camera at some point whenever he's done playing professional basketball. Uh, you've seen all three now, Jerem. The, the Navy, which is a really, really nice new take on that. The Royals, which we just showed you, and the All-White, which was the first of the three uniforms revealed. Which are your favorite and why? Uh, of the three or the one that's coming next? Because we know that it's black, according to Rudy Williams uh, on BYU Sports Nation a few weeks ago. Um, I like the Navy with the royal trim. That's my favorite right now. What's yours? Yep, absolutely. We've seen those close in person. In fact, you wore the jersey on the show a few days ago. The Navy with the royal trim is so clean, so sharp. And they've got the Beat Digger Coog on the shorts as well over the Y. I want those shorts, by the way. I want all the shorts, but the Navy are my favorite. Our own Hema Haymuli pointed out yesterday on Twitter that Liberty uniforms this weekend look very familiar. Uh, did the two former Utah Utes and TJ Green and Charlie Brewer, who play for Liberty, have anything to do with this? No, but it is interesting <laughs> because it almost looks like a straight rip from Utah's uniform, right? Uh, I will say this, for whatever reason, when Liberty wears white helmets, they don't play as good a football in terms of a win-loss record. So maybe that bodes well for being Correlation. That Liberty is wearing the white helmets that look exactly like Utah's uniform. Their white helmet is BYU's Eastern time zone early afternoon game <laughs> thing. <laughs> Causation and correlation. <laughs> maybe, may, maybe, maybe. How about this? LSU, with all of their football tradition, released a hype video that features a cameo by the Angel Moroni from an <laughs> LDS temple in the Baton Rouge area. How about that? It's got us asking, is this something that BYU should have done long, long ago? Yeah, wait a minute. And they came to pass. Yeah, the football team did. Uh, no, I don't think. Also, what's poking out of Angel Moroni's head there? What's going on there? Uh, yeah, th there's a there's a temple there in Baton Rouge. They were playing trumpets in the song, so it kind of fit. Um, also, we steer away from that. Like, you know, the, the church asks, like, NBA teams, like, please don't do a Budweiser commercial over the temple, uh, you know, on ESPN or TNT or whatever. And, and BYU does that in Provo with the temple. So, no, I don't think BYU should have done this a long time ago. No, but I, I was amused by this LDSU, as they put it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, shout out to Zach Hicken for that. LDSU. <laughs> yes. Thought that was really, really interesting. 19th ranked BYU women's soccer back to work tomorrow. We've mentioned it a few times and for good reason. They're rolling right now, Jerem. And you can get a good look at the women when they take on the Zags at Southfield tomorrow. Watch the game live, 9 Eastern, exclusively on the BYU TV app. Coming up, it's time for game day guarantees. I am terrible at these. Anything where I guess what's going to happen, perhaps including my take on BYU at Liberty. Who knows? But that's coming up after the break as we continue from Lynchburg and Provo. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU athletics. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like 
After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. We know you aren't fair weather fans. And neither are we. Watch on our free BYU TV app. Rain or shine. Peeing your pants is cool. Consider me Miles Davis. Perhaps we'll see him against Liberty. Spencer Linton with dry pants so far in Lynchburg, Virginia. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. That quote never gets old to me. I don't know. Maybe for you it does. It's time for game day guarantees. It's time for your BYU Sports Nation game day guarantees. Guarantees. Yeah, right. To be wrong. <laughs> Wait, is Mike still on? Spencer is 11 for 21 as we listen to John Philip Sousa or something like it. Uh, I am 6 for 21. We are combined 17 for 42. Guaranteed to not work. I'll go first. Here we go. Number one, BYU will turn it over exactly one time. 18 takeaways this year from Liberty. They're really good. They'll take it away once, but that's it. That's it. Number two, Liberty will turn it over two plus times. They have 16 giveaways, fifth worst in FPS. Ooh. BYU is going to take it away a couple of times. And number three, the Flames will score 21 points or less. In three home games this year, they have scored exactly 21 points. So I'm going 21 or under. What do you got, Spence? All right. Okay, so you said I'm 11 for 21. 52% is pretty good, right? Or am I just trying to talk myself into feeling better? If you're Shaq at the free throw matter. line. Number one. <laughs> Number one, <laughs> BYU will hold Liberty under 50% on third down conversions. Please, <laughs> please do this. Please do this, BYU. Under 50% on third down conversions. That's so high. Number two. Uh, I know. It's, 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 it's embarrassing I have to even bring this up, but whatever. There's 32%, by the way. Cody Epps. Yeah. Cody Epps is going to score a touchdown for a sixth consecutive yes. game. He scored in five straight games. It's going to be six after tomorrow because he is the dude for BYU's wide receiver group right now. And number three, whoever leads this game at halftime, whichever team has a lead at half, is going to win this game. And here's why. We've talked about Kalani Satake's weird stats in regard. Q Freeze is even more eye-popping. At Liberty, he's 2-9 and nine when his team trails at halftime. Mm. And he's 27-1 and one at Liberty when he leads at halftime. Better lead. So whoever is leading this game at halftime is going to win. BYU fans, you want to feel good? Lead at halftime, and I think the Cougars are going to hold on. Those are my game day guarantees. Hey, those are guaranteed to not happen, which is why we do this. Uh, good <laughs> stuff. Hey, yeah, just oh, watch boy. it until half time, then you don't have to watch the second half. Yeah, yes. Shaq free throws brought up in that segment. That's got to be an <clears throat> for BYU Sports Nation. Great, great, great moment. Coming up next Wednesday, we get the season started. Yeah. Of basketball with our blue-white game coverage as the BYU men's hoops season quickly approaches. Wednesday, 9 Eastern, live on the BYU TV app. Get your first really, really good look in a somewhat game scenario of this team by joining us on Wednesday. Okay, Fantasy Friday. I've, all, I've already lost the season, but we're going to still play. Who am I starting? Cody Epps or Chris Brooks or other? We'll declare this after the break. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere.
Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Before I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU Sports, it's all about the fans. I was four years old when I left Zambia. My dad was born in Shila in the south of Italy. My mom is from Slovakia. We haven't really talked about it, never, not once. My dad doesn't really talk about his life in Serbia. I just really want to know who he is. And then discover who am I. <laughs> This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio apps or just listen to the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review. Spencer's in Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm in Provo. It's time for BYU Sports Nation Fantasy Football Friday. Here are Dem Rules. Each week we pick three players to start from a roster of seven current or former Cougs. The loser from the previous week gets the first waiver wire option. That has been me every week. Let's review the scoring process, shall we, Jerem? And it begins with points being awarded on offense for yards, gain, touchdowns, defensively for tackles, tackles for loss, sacks, takeaways, and touchdowns. And not that it matters right now with kickers for field goals and extra points on special teams. It does teams. not matter. I'm currently 7-0. 7-0 on the season with a magic number to clinch of zero. So at this point, Jerry, you have clinched. because it's, it's over. already over. Yes. Now it's become, can I run the table? Can you prevent can you the perfect me? season in fantasy football? You're yeah, not, yeah, let's You're go. not the 72 right, Dolphins. Get out of here. Okay, here are my starters. <laughs> Zach Wilson. Can you throw some passing touchdowns, Zach? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm tired of the rushing touchdowns from all your teammates. Ben Bywater is my only defensive player. He starts, of course. And Cody Epps is going to get the start. Should have started him last week. I yeah. started Chris Brooks. Wouldn't have mattered. You would have won anyway. Blah, 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 blah. Those are my starters. What I hope to be what's called a win. I think this is one of your strongest, if not your strongest, lineup to date, Jerem. I, this may be the week for you. You're not patronizing Especially me, but BYU it feels like it a little going. bit. No, no, no. <laughs> if BYU decides to run the ball... Let, Let's say that they run the ball on the end around with, you know, some receivers and Jaron Hall doesn't have as many passing touchdowns. Just maybe, just maybe. But uh, yes, I'm going with Jaron Hall. My defensive starter is Max Tooley. And I'm going to throw in Puka Nakua. Finally. Believe it or not, I have won all seven of these matchups without Puka Nakua. Crazy. Really contributing or in the lineup. I, I started him early, but then he was injured and didn't play. And then I went away from him because I wasn't sure he was going to play. And then he played and had a huge game. So hopefully Puka's good and plays tomorrow and scores points. He's in my lineup to Jared, get it done once again. Jared Hall's been the key to this entire thing. He's been, a, he's been a beast. And even against Notre Dame when he wasn't, I still didn't take advantage. I lost by what? Like a couple points or something? Uh, one point. Lo losers one, losers one talk point. about margin. So I'm a loser. Uh, and I lost by one. So, hey, <laughs> maybe we'll get it done this week. I'm just trying to get a couple of wins on the board. I'm going to draft great next year with the number one pick uh, because I'm going to lose this season. Although I want to bring up an idea next week that we haven't brought up <laughs> quite yet. That's a tease for next week with Fantasy Friday. Okay, our okay, question of the day. Okay, is this, is this deal with a trade maybe? Maybe hey, a big trade you want to throw in or know. some stipulations for me? Lunch considerations, okay. we'll see. All right. The Brad King on Instagram <laughs> regarding our question of the day. How confident are you going into the BYU at Liberty football game tomorrow? On Instagram, any game is a winnable game for BYU. <laughs> 
Except uh, Oregon. We have the talent necessary. We just need to have consistency on both sides of the football. Now, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's important because I think offensively last week, obviously, people aren't going to complain about 35 points unless you're Dave McCann. You feel like the offense should have scored 53. Um, defensively, you got to show up. Do you feel like BYU is going to be more consistent on both sides of the ball? Or does BYU just need to uh, – the off- does the offense just need to outshoot uh, what the defense gives up tomorrow? How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah. Look, if BYU's offense can score more than, you know, 14 points in the first half, like get to 17 by halftime, that's good enough. But the defense needs to be markedly better. So I expect to to see a much more urgent and simplified defense allowing players to kind of fly around. It's one thing to talk it. It's another thing to actually show it. And I said earlier in the show, I feel like this this team has rallied around Elisa Tuiaki specifically and Kalani Satake uh, after some very, very emotional team meetings this week. So, yeah, watch for the defense to fly around, Jeremy. I love that I was looking at all these responses on Instagram, um, and I just keep seeing the teeth-clenched emoji in response to our People question. People are nervous, dude. Like, that's it. No, no words. No words, just teeth-clenched emoji, <laughs> like several of them from several different people. But I think that pretty much sums up how a lot of fans are feeling. We're going to learn a lot about BYU tomorrow, Spence, because this team's back is against the wall. We said two weeks ago, hey, if you don't show up against Notre Dame and Arkansas, you could be staring at three losses in a row with Liberty because it is a tough game in that regard. I feel confident BYU is going to win tomorrow. Our uh, elite voice of the day is presented by PAX, Healthcare Elevated, Clyde Livingston on Twitter. I'm more confident in a BYU win than I am in a Jerem Jordan fantasy win. Hey, that's me too. That's for sure. I don't have confidence in that at all. I'm feeling a ton of confidence. And I know there are people out there who are like, oh, no, if Jeremy's confident, we're, uh, we're toast. Hey, it's not about me. It's about the defense right now. Today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. How about the graphic put up by uh, Amazon last night on Thursday Night Football about Taysom Hill? This year they've had Amazing. 24 drives on which Hill has a pass catcher carry, 100 points, 4.2 per drive, 48 drives without that going into that game. Point nine per drive. More Taysom, clearly. Yes, yes. Make it Taysom time most of the time if you're the Saints. You're two and five at this point. What do you have to lose? Why not? Put him in. Why not? And I'm not sure if that's like actually starting Holy a quarterback, cow. but just get this guy the ball more. Our thanks to today's guest, the General Cameron Jensen. Hey, didn't Cameron Jensen play with Dennis Pitta? I think he did at one point. I miss Dennis Pitta. No. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This and all of our shows are always on demand and available on BYUSN.com. For Spencer, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Kelvin, uh, Kevin Gilbride. See you tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern for football pregame on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Go-